everyone, and welcome back to another Commander Guide, uh, this time for Tychus. Let's get into it. Here's the game plan. So with Tychus, he's a bit of an atypical commander. He's a, bit, a little bit different from your usual commanders. Uh, so we're actually going to talk about a guiding strategy on how to play Tychus, the sort of mentality you should be carrying with yourself when you are playing Tychus. Um, and then after that, we will have a look at some of his core weaknesses, but also at the same time, his core strengths. And then we'll have a look at his units in the sense that we'll have a look at all of his outlaws each in turn. And I'll give some recommendations as to what they do best and how to buy them, when to buy them, and should you buy them. And then we'll wrap it up with other in the sense that um, there's some other residual upgrades that Tychus has that really aren't too important, but I'll sort of, sort of plop it in there. Uh, and then we'll have some gameplay at the end. This is going to be a quite a long video. Um, I've recorded this like at least three times, and like each of those times, like this talking portion ends up being like around 20 minutes. And since there seems to be no way around it. So you know what? I'll put some timestamps in the description down below if you want to jump to each of the outlaws. But let's get into it. Also, if you are a new face here, consider dropping a sub if you enjoy Direct Strike content because I will be making Direct Strike videos on the daily. Uh, there'll be gameplay videos, there'll be guides like this on Wednesdays, so keep an eye, keep an eye out for those and keep, them, keep your eyes peeled for those. I'll pop a playlist uh, for all of my guides currently up in the corner um, in the card the section, top right corner. Uh, you can go check those out um, if you would like to. Okay, so the guiding strategy for Tychus. Uh, Tychus, you have to very much be very patient and you really win by counterpicking your opponent. By counterpicking, I mean by buying the right outlaws that counter your opponent's build. Uh, Tychus needs to counter his opponent's build much more so than others because his outlaws are very good at doing their specific job. But other than that, they're not that great, right? So if you buy the wrong outlaw for the wrong situation, then you basically, you're screwed because each outlaw costs 650 minerals. So you just made it, you just made an investment that was, that's not gonna pay you back, right? Uh, and next, you have to micro. Your outlaws have very powerful abilities, but if you let the AI automatically cast them for you, some of those abilities will become absolutely useless. We're going to see some of them as we go and take up some of the outlaws. You also have to anticipate and plan for what your opponent is going to do, right? If you're up against a Han and Horner, you know that they're going to tech switch. So don't go all in on ground units, like anti-ground units, right? You have to anticipate what your opponent's going to do. If you're up against a Menx, you know that he's going to try and push, say, shock divisions, or you know he's going to try and push out royal guards in more numbers than you can handle, right? So you have to anticipate what your opponent is going to do. So much of Tychus, like Tychus is hard because he needs a lot of game experience to play well, which is why you have a lot of people complaining about pub Tychuses that don't know what they're doing, right? Um, because Tychus, at the end of the day, his core weakness is that his, he's quite reactive. He really depends on what his opponent is doing. He can't just say, I'm going to build a bunch of these guys and let's see what happens, right? Because, well, it takes him like five to 10 minutes to build a bunch of the same guys, right? And if it's being countered, it's going to lose really hard, right? So Tychus has to depend on what his opponent's doing, and he has to make critical decisions. That being said, if you make the right decision, you will do very, very well. If you make the wrong decision, you won't do that well, right? So he's unforgiving in that manner. So let's have a look at his the guns, this section of his outlaws. So first we have Tychus himself. His primary ability is a grenade that does 75 damage, AoE. Uh, his best upgrade to buy that you should always be getting on him is the Kalmorian Rip Around. Uh, it removes five armor from the target he's attacking. So that actually gives him five extra damage per auto attack. And Tychus shoots five times every second. So that's a lot of damage. Okay. Uh, if you can get to tier three, Sure Shot Network Helmet is also very, very good because it like increases his DPS by like double to almost triple sometimes. Uh, so of course, core strengths is that he has good AOE burst on his kit thanks to his grenade. Uh, he has high sustained DPS because of as we just heard, he shoots five times per minute per second, right? And he absolutely destroys single targets. So his one weakness is that there are lots of small single targets that survive his grenade, or maybe there's just too many of them that hit that like his grenade doesn't kill all of them, right? Um, so they survive his grenade, right? And they can swarm him. He cannot handle that, right? So some prominent examples are Carex Sentinels and Phoenix uh, legionaries, right? Those are high health melee targets that do lots of damage. Dark Templars, uh, there can be argument made for that as well. So that's when Tychus sort of struggled, and that's when you need that's when you need to back him up. So when is it when when do you want to buy Tychus? Well, he's a very safe opener. Many Tychus players just sort of buy Tychus and let him go out because Tychus deals very well with everything in the early game, right? He can clear out swarms of Zerglings if he wants to. He can clear out Marauders if he wants to. Um, because he, he has, he has a, f a hefty health pool, 650 HP, and he's no pushover in terms of DPS either, right? So most people who play Tychus open with him, I would actually recommend that you sort of wait, right? Because with Tychus, there's no need to rush in the early game because you are a beast in the early game. Your hero units will absolutely demolish anything that gets sent against you. So just wait for one wave or maybe even two waves and see what your opponent 
is going to send out. See who they are in the first place, right? I would recommend teching up to tier two actually, um, and then scanning your opponent if they are so inclined not to do anything, right? Because with Tychus, like you can easily win back tempo just by building the right units. So you can take this risk in the early game because you are also strong in the early game. You just drop off in the mid game and then you kick in in the late game again. So this is what I recommend recommend with Tychus. He's usually a very safe opener. Next, we have Crooked Sam. So Crooked Sam's pr primary ability is Demo Charge. He drops a charge on a target, and after 5 seconds, it explodes, and they take 500 damage, okay? Uh, and the best upgrades you would want, you would be wanting to get for Sam is his Lars Core Charge, which doubles the damage of his Demo Charge, so it does 1,000 damage, right? Uh, and the next thing is his Mobius Restraint, which stuns the target that is being um, Demo Charged. Now, with Sam, you have to micro his Demo Charge, because you know what? If you don't, he's going to drop it on a Zergling. He's gonna drop it on a Zergling. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna drop that 500 damage on a Zergling. And the thing is, Sam is gonna kill that Zergling regardless because he does the second most DPS next to Tychus. Uh, if Tychus does not have, like, unless if Tychus has the Sure Shot Network upgrade, without it, like, he actually does more damage than Tychus. Um, so his advantages is that, like, he's just raw power DPS, right? He's very strong single target DPS, and he's very good at taking out high priority targets. The only weakness is that he's the squishiest Tychus unit you will ever find. 375 HP, and a lot of times he's bad against small units. You want to buy him against medium-sized units that have around like 140 health-ish and above, right? Um, units that have like say 35 health, he shoots twice, and that wastes his time because each shot does 30 damage already, all right? Um, and so he does 60 damage total, but it, you know he wastes time sw switching between targets. So why should you buy Sam? You should buy Sam when. Your opponent has a large, expensive, heroic, heroic unit, okay? Um, so, for example, there's a Hyperion on the field. There's a Dahaka on the field. There are Taldari motherships on the field, right? Uh, also, if you're facing another Tychus, get Sam, which is why I recommend you don't buy anything in the first wave, because if your enemy drops down a Tychus, you will be ahead by one Sam. And if you're ahead by one Sam, you're going to end up winning, because like, if he starts going Sams and you start going Sams, you might have seven Sams, you might have six Sams and a Tychus. Your seven Sams will drop your demo charges, stunning his entire wave. And then free low. Easy. You are you just win. You just auto win, right? Um, and in the late game, if you just want more generic DPS, if like you just want someone to do damage, right? you could also get Sam in the late game. I mean, by late game, I mean like 25 minutes in, 30 minutes in, sometime around that time. And uh, now we have Sirius Black. Okay, So his first ability is that he can transform into a giant dog. And then you can buy upgrades that allows him to equip him to, with a... Wait a minute. Sorry, guys. This, this, this is the wrong outlaw. Hold on. The wrong universe. There we go, we got Sirius Sykes. Okay, so his primary ability, he deploys a Warhound turret, right? It's a small sentry gun. Uh, it does a little bit of DPS, barely noticeable, honestly. Um, his best upgrade that you probably want to get for him is his Thunderbolt missiles. Missiles. It shoots eight little missiles that do 100 damage each um, to air targets, and um, his turret also shoots two of them. So he's good at clearing out those units. Um, another upgrade you might want to get is his Terror Rounds. So each of his attacks have a 30% chance of fearing enemies. And I think they're feared for like around two seconds. Three seconds, something like that, right? So it's an AOE fear, and so they just they just stop doing what whatever they're doing. So that's really really strong, right? Um, and his turns also have a three percent chance to fear. Okay, so his core strength is that um, well he's a bit of he's a bit of an oddball actually. He does a lot of weird things that you wouldn't expect him to do well with. He does he's very good against melee swarms because he has an he has an upgrade that you can get that causes him to explode when he dies, and the explosion does three hundred damage. All right. Um, so we'll kill all the zealots or all the legionaries and sentinels that are surrounding him, our Dark Templar. All right. He's very strong in large numbers. So if you just built pure Sirius and you went fear, you might be able to fear an entire enemy wave and they'll just sit there not being able to do anything. And then you'll just kill him based because of that. Right. And he's strong versus, I want to say air units, but like light air units, like small particulate air units that um, there's too many of them that your Tychus grenade does not um, manage to kill. Right, uh, even if it's been upgraded, because there is also an upgrade. Like I don't want to like sort of bombard you guys with too much information, but Tychus can upgrade his grenade to do fifty extra damage as well. Um, but I want to say by far it is probably one of the weakest Tychus units by itself. One of, one of, not like B, but one of. Um, and a lot of times, whatever Cirrus can do, there are better options. Um, the other outlaws that do a better job than him. Uh, so when can you buy him? Uh, well, when there's a lot of tiny cheap air units, so for example, like Banshees and Mutalisk. Um, you, there could be an argument made to buy um, Sirius. I think more so for Banshees than for Mutalisk, because Mutalisk, there's going to be another option that's better. Uh, on top of Tychus Grenade, there's going to be another option coming up soon. Um, and then, as well, you can also build like the Cheese build with Fear. And actually, I think Sirius might be the only answer to Vorazun Dark Templars. 
um, because Dark Templars have to get onto Sirius to auto attack him, and once they're up close hitting him, he will blow up. Uh, and Dark Templars only have 200 HP, so it's a guaranteed kill. Uh, and you might be wondering, well, why not get some of the muscle to counter Dark Templar, right? For example, Blaze, right here, right? He is an anti-light unit specialist, right? He's one of the tanks that Tychus has. His uh, primary ability is Oil Spill. He drops a bunch of oil on the ground, and uh, that slows enemies' attack speed and movement speed, so it's very good CC, like very, very good, right? It, the, the enemies basically do no damage to you uh, once they get hit by the Oil Spill. And uh, Blaze also does bonus damage to them when he ignites the oil. Uh, so the best upgrades you want to get on him is first you want to upgrade his oil AoE, um, if you need to, right, if, there's, if your enemy's just building, like, Stukov, he builds lots and lots of infested civilians, or there's lots and lots of Zerglings, for example, or even Zealots, right? Upgrade that oil spill capacity, it'll expand it massively, and suddenly all those units do no damage to you. They're just slowly walking around you. And if you get to Tier 3, you should upgrade his combat suit. It basically, it makes it so that he can only take up to 30 damage from attacks. So if something hits him for 100, nope, he only takes 30, right? Like, he, he might take, like, 3 damage from, like, I don't know, like, a Marine, if he has, like, 5 armor, for example, right? But, like, he can't take more than 30 damage. So that's one of the best upgrades to get on him, and, but it's only available at Tier 3, uh, which is why, like, you might want to consider teching up a little earlier at some time. So uh, his core strength is that he's really good against light ground units, and he's really strong uh, tank all around, right? Um, and he's very powerful against crowd control. Uh, he has, I mean, no, he's very powerful crowd control himself. My bad. Uh, and one of his weaknesses is that um, he's very expensive to invest in if you do go for the uh, Tier 3 Immortal Armor because you need to tech up a bunch of times. I think the calculation ends up being um, close to like 1,600 or something like that to get Tier 3 Blaze, like your first Tier 3 Blaze. Because uh, like the Immortal Shield itself is 300 minerals and Blaze is 650. All the upgrades combined, you know, the math is there. Uh, he's weak versus anti-armor because he himself is an armored unit, so Immortals will beat the stuff out of him until he gets his um, anti-armor upgrade, like his, his Immortal suit, but even then, still, not that great. And he can't shoot up. Uh, so, you want to buy Blaze when there's lots of light units, right? So, for example, Zealots, Zerglings, Stukovs, Marines. The only exception is Dark Templar because until Blaze goes Tier 3, Dark Templar do, like, 50 damage to him per auto attack, and they're no pushovers. Like, they, they have 200 HP, they will survive, and they will absolutely tear your wave apart. So that's why Sirius is actually the best option to deal with Dark Templar, not Blaze. Uh, and Blaze is usually decent as your first tank uh, because he gives a lot of CC with that oil spill. So like, if you're just sort of going in blind and like you, I don't know, you, you don't really know what to do, um, you can go Tychus Blaze, um, which is like a usually quite a decent opener. Um, but like, I that's like too like a that's too formulaic. I don't want to rec recommend that. It's more of like see what your opponent is doing and then build accordingly. That's like the Tychus theme, right? See what your opponent is building, and then build accordingly. Uh, yo, and you can tech up to tier three for that massive tankiness boost, and that's that's basically it for Blaze. So let's look at Boswell. So Boswell, uh, his first ability, is, uh, his primary ability is heavy impact boots, uh, or heavy impact, right? Uh, he sort of pulls himself in with his little, like, little grabby rocket over here in his right hand, and he stuns the units, and he deals some damage to them. Um, you can upgrade it, uh, I would recommend you always buy impact boots, by the way. It's only 100 minerals. It doubles the stun duration and doubles the stun radius. I think if you have a three Boswell spaced properly, um, three three or four Boswell spaced properly, you can probably stun your entire opponent's front line uh, when they sort of jump in. Uh, you also want to upgrade Redline Power Cells because it causes Boswell's auto attacks to do more and more damage every time he hits. And he also hits faster and faster, right? So you want to have a tanking unit um, that also deals a lot of DPS and that also drops CC. That's Boswell, okay? Um, Critical response system is a very expensive upgrade. It costs 600 minerals, right? Um, I've seen some people go it, but honestly, I think in my opinion, it might be better to go a Boswell, like two Boswells versus one Boswell and a response system. Because the response system is so expensive, right? That like, yes, it grants, like when he dies, he gets a refresh on his health bar. And then he also gets a, like, I think three or four seconds of immunity. So he can't be targeted, right? But it's not really that great. Like, it, you could use it to, like, stack and disrupt your opponent's wave, but probably better to get another Boswell, unless you really have money to blow, right? Unless you really have money to blow. Uh, so his core strengths is that he has strong engage and crowd control. Uh, he's very good at single target DPS, uh, and he's typeless. So he, he's not armored, he's not light, he just, he's just biological and heroic. That's it, right? So he doesn't take any bonus damage from anything else. Uh, so he's very good in that aspect. So he's really good at breaking siege lines as well. And he's 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 all, he's all around probably like one of the most solid Tychus units to build. Like when in doubt, when in doubt, you don't know what to build, just get a Boswell. Um, 
And so weaknesses, he's very expensive. Um, investment, if you do go for critical um, response systems, otherwise he's quite good. Um, and he's not good at AOE, right? He's good single target, right? But AOE does not, it does not work out for him. So don't get him when you're getting swarmed. Get Blaze when you're getting swarmed, right? Ideally, you want to combine Blaze and Boswell. So when would you buy it? Uh, well, you need a tank, right? Um, and they have anti-armor. So if you are encountering Marauders, if you're encountering Immortals, right? Get Boswell. Right? If they have large tanky front line like Ultralist Tyrannosaurus, get Boswell because Boswell can go toe to toe with them and come out on top because he's just he's just so tanky, right? And Boswell really is probably going to be like your most staple tank, right? Most Tychuses will get lots of Boswells, right? Um, and ideally, you want to black up your Boswell with the Blaze if your opponent has small units because Boswell cannot handle lots and lots of small units, right? But he's very good at handling just big units in general, right? Uh, and then next we have Rattlesnake, all right? So this is a very stealthy and dangerous and venomous animal. He's gonna jump out at you and bite you. Oh wait, this is the wrong Rattlesnake. Sorry guys. We got Kev Rattlesnake, uh, Tychus' Marauder Hero. Uh, so his primary ability is Revitalizer. He puts down a sort of healing field uh, that heals units around him with the radius um, in, a, in a radius for 2% of their max HP uh, per second. Uh, so put that in perspective, Boswell starts off with 1,000 HP, so his max HP is 20 HP per second. So it's a decent heal, right? It won't top your units off, but it will give them extra tankiness. Uh, one of his best buys is the Secret Stim Pack, um, is that it only gives it only costs 100 minerals, and it does what it says. It's a Stim Pack, and it also heals them. So he shoots faster, and he, he stays alive longer. So you should always get this when you get Rattlesnake. Um, now he has a secret, secret, secret item called uh, Hammer Munitions, which is available at Tier 3. And this makes Rattlesnake a beast. It makes Kev a beast. All right? So his attacks deal splash damage equal to half of the damage that the original target takes. All right? So to put this in perspective, he does 40 damage per auto attack and double of that damage towards armored targets so he deals 80 damage right this is like an upgrade no upgrades okay so you will be dealing 80 damage to an armored target and then everything next to it takes 40 right so as we know based on that he is very strong against anti-armor and kev is actually a very good support unit because he also has other upgrades with his uh, sort of healing beacon um one of them increases the attack speed of everyone inside of it so if your allies are stacking up with you right you can get that so that your units and your allies units get extra attack speed so he's very useful for that and hammer munitions will cause him to just tear apart anything that's armored um the only issue is that he's not really a tank and he's weak actually against armored units himself because he himself is considered armored and he can't shoot up so you need to support him right so you want to buy him when there's lots of armor units. So Ultralisk, Marauders, Immortal Siege Tanks, right? You want to make sure that you only buy him after you have a front line, right? I mean, it's ideal to build the front line first because you probably end up having something like Tychus and then Boswell and then Kev, right? Because Boswell will be able to tank, right? Uh, make sure you get multiple Boswells when it comes to an anti-armor comp, right? Uh, because your Boswells will be in the front soaking up all the damage and because they're not, they're, they're not armored themselves, they take less damage. And then Kev will be smashing all those armor units in the safety of like the sort of back line, right? Um, and Kev is actually very good support for Vega. Uh, and actually, we're going to look at Vega right now in the fixers. So Vega's primary ability is to dominate a unit, right? So she takes control of a non-heroic enemy unit, and then after five seconds, they self-destruct, okay? Uh, and Vega's best buy is her side projector. It c allows her to bring five air units onto the ground. And so now they can be attacked like ground units and this is where kev kicks in right because kev will help you smash those big armored units that are flying right uh, so core strengths she's powerful versus very expensive units so if your opponent has a lot of expensive non-heroic units bam vega's good for that right and she murders expensive air units by the same idea because well she can steal them and she can put them onto the ground where your kevs can smash them where your boswells can smash them right and that's like that's your core front line right the only weakness is that she doesn't have much dps and she has mediocre hp Right, so those are only weaknesses. She's, she's really not that good for any of the other situations, right? So you want to get Vega when your enemy is predominantly large air units or they will go air, right? So example, if you're against Han and Horner, always keep enough money to buy Vega. Because here's the thing, if they go tech switch into a stereo race and all you have are Boswells and maybe a Tychus, you are going to get destroyed. Because the Asteria Rates do so much damage. Like, they do so much damage. They're no joke. Don't mess with the Asteria Rates, okay? So, make sure you keep money in the pocket for Vega. Because once you get Vega, you're going to bring those Asteria Rates to the ground. And you can bring five of them, right? And Hunt and Horner's Asteria Rates cost 310 minerals each. 
So that's 1,550 minerals worth of asteroids that she can bring to the ground that you can smash with your Boswells, right? Or your, your Kevs, right? And the thing is, like, if your opponent has carriers, your opponent has battle cruisers, Tempest, Vega, right? Uh, also, if your opponent has mostly large, expensive, non-heroic units, such as Archons from Artanis, or if you're facing Manx and his Royal Guards, dominate those things. Really easy. And dominate is an ability that you want to cast um, by yourself. Because if you allow the AI to cast dominate whenever, it'll dominate, like, the first thing it sees. So it's like, uh, look at that Zealot over there. I'll take it. You don't want that. You want that battle cruiser that's filling up in the air, right? So make sure you micro this one. Next, we have Nux. <clears throat> Nux is also another one you... Actually, Nux you can micro, but later on in the game, it's not as critical because the units are stacking up. So his primary ability is Ultrasonic Pulse. He releases a sort of pulse that deals damage over time in an area. It goes up to 100, right? And really, I want to say that Cloudburst Shells is the best buy, but really it's like the first thing you should buy. It like increases the damage of the pulse by 50%. <coughs> Oh, that's the Corona, guys. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, right, um, You when you buy Nux, you want to basically outfit him with all his gear after a certain point in time, right? Um, so because he demolishes stacks of units, right? And he's Tychus' best AoE um, overall. He's his best AoE overall. Like, if you want a generic AoE guy, Nux, right? Um, and if you have multiple Nuxes, your pulses will stack. So unlike Psystorm, which only does like that 80 damage or 75 damage in that one area, and it doesn't matter if you put another one on top of it, if you put two Nux Storms on top of each other, they will not deal 20 damage per second. They will deal 40 damage per second until everything inside explodes, right? The only weakness he has is that um, if there's a lot of fast-moving small units, um, like fast-moving high-health targets. So what I'm thinking of is, is like an Ultralisk. You don't want to get Nux into Ultralisk. Um, you don't want to get Nux into, like, Legionnaires either, because Legionnaires have way too much HP to really care about the tickle damage. Instead, you can get Blaze to counter those things. And Nux is very expensive to outfit, right? If you really want a Nux, you want to, you want to get all three of his um, damage upgrades on his uh, Pulse. Uh, so it causes his Pulse to last twice as long. One does 50% increased damage than the one we just saw, and another one, I think, increases the radius, so it's bigger, right? But to get all that, it's, like, getting, like... I think it costs, like... Like 1,200 in total to outfit a Nux. But once you do, he kills like more of that in mineral value um, if you can get it all to work out, right? So, when would you want to buy Nux? Well, there's a lot of small enemy units that sort of survive Tychus Grenades. So, what I mean by that is like they have more than 125 HP, right? So, if they have like 140, like say like Swan Goliaths, for example, um, maybe you're dealing with Dragoons. Although, Dragoons, you probably just want to go Kev, right? Um, Hydralisk, some Hydralisks might survive because there might be more, or Queens will survive as well. Right, so um, here I have it Marauders as well, like random Marauders. Um, so you can get Nux. You can also get Nux for Banshees as well, um, because those have decent amount of HP, but they will not survive. Like you hit them with the hit them with the tech screen, then hit them with the Nux Blast. Right, um, and also there's lots of like stacked slow moving air siege units, like Brood Lords or Guardians. Right, um, you can get Nux because they they just sort of stay there. Right, or even tanks, maybe tanks, but like. Like, you can get Kev to fix that as well, right? But, like, Nux is good against those air units that sort of stack up. Um, and once you have a critical mass of Nux, like, if you see your opponent massing Brewlords, see your opponent massing Guardians, right? Just just keep bam, 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 bam. Like, Nux, 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 right? Uh, make sure you have a decent front line to, like, support them, but, like, Nux, right? That's your that's your best bet in, in that situation. Um, and then, finally, we have Nikara, the meme, right? Um, Nikara doesn't really do anything. She heals your units for 30 HP per second. And her primary ability is Restore to Burst, which, like, sounds really good. Heals all units for 200 HP, right? Um, and then continues to restore HP over, like, time, right? Uh, the only issue I have in the car is that, like, she just doesn't attack, right? Um, like, she's good at healing, right? But really, she's better at healing your allies than healing you. Because, because you have less units. Each and every single one of your units will be taking more damage, right? Sure, your enemies have less health on each of their individual, individual units, but each of those units have their auto attacks. And so technically you're taking much more damage than you are dishing out, right? Because you, you only have like say like five, six, seven, eight units, right? And yes, they deal lots of damage um, per shot, right? But they're also taking a lot more damage than the car can heal, right? Um, usually, like you can tell Tychus is bad if the first thing they do is buy Tychus and they follow up with a Nikara. That's a that's a that's a good sign they, they have never played Tychus before. Um, yeah, don't spend 650 on this, at least not any time before, like, any time before 30, 30 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, right? The only time you might want to get in the car is, like, when you have a full stack team of outlaws, like 10 outlaws, 12 outlaws, then you can toss it in the car, right? But other than that, focus on building your outlaw line 
So that they're strong. Um, you might want to get in a car if your teammates have gone a lot of small to medium sized units. So like say they have Mutilus, they have Rainer Bio, they have Phoenix Gateway units, they have they have like sort of like 200 ish health units to like like 100 200 ish health units that sort of survive until your own wave comes around right then you might you could get Nikara in that situation but still not recommend uh so residual we're gonna wrap this up so Tychus has five levels of weapon and air uh and armor upgrades right um armor upgrades also grant his units 10 percent bonus max hp so he can get 50 percent increase in hp on his unit so boswell can go from 1000 hp all the way to 1500 well actually there's a little bit more to that than that right um uh, and one of the things I actually want to suggest is that um, this is a really greedy suggestion, but like there's no harm going to tier three very early in the early game as Tychus because you sort of just sit on your hands most of the time in the early game. And like you're really powerful in the early game. So like you could just build Tychus and like Tychus could handle like six, seven, eight, nine waves of units, like of like over time of your unit spawning, your opponent unit spawning over time, right? Based on what your opponent's doing, right? Uh, I don't want to say like always do this, but like judge the game based on what your if your opponent's putting out like two guys and they're obviously teching up, right? It's fine to just tech up here, right? You don't really have to pressure them because if you pressure them, you might get yourself countered, and that's worse than like just waiting, right? Because once you get to tier three, you now have access to your tier three upgrades. Should you choose to buy them, right? You don't have to but they're open for you to buy them, right? Because late in the game, it might feel like you don't have time to upgrade because you're trying to hang on or you're trying to close out the game, right? But if you get it out earlier, you'll just have that option open for you. That's sort of my opinion, right? Um, and it's sort of like the way I've been playing uh, based on the read of the map, right? But we'll see how like this gameplay video comes up because um, maybe that'll showcase something different as well. Uh, and so he also has three other upgrades. He has combat supplement, supplements, so all the muscle units, so all the tanks. Right, so Blaze, Boswell, and Kev get 25% more HP. So Boswell can actually get, get up to 1,700, 1,750 HP, right? ETC triggers makes all the guns have increased attack speed by 25%. So that's Tychus himself, we got Sam, and we got Sirius. And a detection is given to all the fixers, uh, so Nikara, Vega, and Nux, right? So that's basically it for Tychus. We're going to jump into the gameplay right now. All right, we are back with some gameplay. Let's rock it. We're playing on the uh, Trench Warfare Brawl. If you have not seen the Trench Warfare Brawl, go check it out. I'm going to pop a playlist over here. Uh, so this game mode is going to be a little longer, and it's going to be a little harder for Titus, actually, because of the no lack of middle income. Uh, the Stronghold is going to be very helpful for us in terms of building up um, and allow us to stall into the later bit of the game, if we so choose. Uh, and we also have access to some very powerful hybrids, so I'm just going to go and... Research. Pop a tear up on that one. I'm actually gonna wait for my Tychus opponent, or not Tychus, but for my opponent to build something. Uh, well, I don't know. I want to see what I'm against here on red. Uh, red could be. Let's see. What's up? That's a structure. Okay. Uh, all right. If you guys skipped the guide and just came right to the gameplay, I respect that too. That is cool. Uh, we have another Tychus ally here, so that's interesting. That should make for a very, very interesting game. Looks like there's a Mengsk. Mengsk in purple. Uh, there we go. And that is our Zagara ally that's facing Mengsk. And Tychus here has already gotten Tychus. Um, but I think he got it afterwards. Because Tychus uh, is a little bit more expensive. Um, he 325 minerals, additional start. But even then, right, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to see what uh, we're going to get. And it looks like I'm against Abathur. Because there's some roaches on the ground. Uh, so against Abathur... I think he's going to be going Guardians against me, uh, which tells me that I should open up, well I should open up with Tychus anyways, because Tychus is pretty good. Uh huh, and there we go, get that refinery going, because there is no mill income, we got to be rely on this for our income. Let's tech up our power level on our Mobius capsule. And there looks like a there looks like there's gonna be a swan in the first position. I guess, I'm guessing in the purple position. There we go. Tychus grenade, very effective at dispatching all those zerglings, as you just saw there. Uh, he does not have rip arounds, it seems. Um, Kelmorian rip arounds are a staple. Make sure you always get it. Um, here we go. My Tychus is coming out. Let's make sure I don't cast my grenade randomly. Throw that grenade here. These roaches are going to survive the grenade though, but a Kev should counter the roaches quite easily. 
Uh, that is if my opponent decides to continue going roaches. If he does not continue going roaches, then there's no point. Let's go for tier 2, actually. Tier 2 so I can access the most cost-efficient hybrid right here. Uh, no other reason than that. Usually Tychus, you just can you just want to stay tier one, honestly. Like I know I made I know I made a recommendation in the guide video that like it's possible to just push the tier three. It's possible if your opponent does nothing, All right? But that's that's literally if your opponent just sits on their hands, All right? Because you want to be getting out outlaws. Um, you want to have a sizable number of outlaws. Uh, okay, so there we go. Tychus almost handled all of them. Um, these little banelings. Oh, almost got them, the splitterlings. So I'm gonna have to. I actually could have bought another outlaw here, I think. Um, but I'm delaying. I think I might get a blaze. I might get a blaze um, to start us off, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we do with that. We got some marines here. They're coming in. Uh, there we go. Drop that grenade on him. But I think Tychus is going to go down here. Uh, I think if I back Tychus up with a Kev, though, it should be quite easy. Kev will be pretty useful later on if he has to support Vega and taking down um, Guardians. Um, but I suspect that maybe we'll be dealing with Swarm Hawks, maybe. Uh, so let's just see that. I want to drop a scan. Tier 2 also lets you get access to scan. It looks like he just teched up. And his Void Worth has a little bit more energy than mine. Uh, that's okay. Alright, so... Let's just get a... Let's just get a Kev. Get a Rattlesnake out here. Uh, because Rattlesnake will be good against Swan's armored units. Um, as well as Menk's his potential armored units. Um, that is a lot of Zerglings coming up, by the way. Uh... Too bad they're gonna go down to the bunker. Um, so I'm not gonna buy anything yet until I see what my opponent is building. Um, because it might be that he's still sticking with roaches, uh, but we'll see. The way to beat Tychus though is to stack up your siege units. Um, and if he can if he can get that to happen, that'll be very good for him. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, so it looks like his roaches are currently beating me. And that means I need to get Kev. Get Rattlesnake over here. Put him down here, put him down here. Get that Secret Stim Stash. Secret Stim Pack. And allow the wave to fall as it does. So we got Blaze over here. We got our Tychus out. That's the oil spill coming out. Uh, reduces the damage of those units. Uh, but unfortunately the buildings are... Well, they weren't really affected that much. Um, okay. So now we got double Tychus units to showcase, I guess. My allies build and my own build. And we'll see whether my ally is doing it right. Manx looks like he's still on tier 1, uh, based on this. Um, he looks like he's only going Zerg only. Zerg only Manx. That's very interesting. Um, let's see. So um, Kev should be able to handle these hybrids quite well. Uh, but there is that Immortal. Uh, but Kev will just blast the way at him. There we go. He's got a stim pack going on. That'll help me neutralize all these roaches as well, quite effectively. Uh, because he does 80 damage to the roaches. The roaches don't have that much HP. So they're gonna go down quite quickly, look at that. Boom, boom, two shot those roaches. There we go. Uh, and, oh, there we go, we got Swarm Hosts coming out. We got Swarm Hosts. Okay, and we got a, we got a, we got an Aegis, not Aegis Guard, we got a Shock Division, my bad. Uh, oh, look at that, we just took off that Swarm Host in two shots. So as you can see already, Kev is very effective very, very effective against armored units, uh, and all, all it took was for me to get one Kev and to turn that whole whole wave around, basically. Um, I think there'll be arguments to be made for Nux as well, so I will get Nux in preparation, uh, just in preparation, uh, because there's a lot of small units, uh, so Nux is going to be useful. Get the Flash Force Visor so that he has detection. Uh, so here we go, we've got the Cloud Burst shells, we also have the Ultrasonic Booster increasing the radius, and the Amplifier that increases the duration. Uh, so there we go. Nux gets some vision out here. Alright, there we go. Drop that grenade right here. Uh, there's a shock division attack in me, I think. Uh, but right now, I think now that that's enough for our back line. We need some more front line. Uh, because Kev, as you can see, is not a great tank. I think based on this, we're going to have to get a Blaze. Uh, so look here, we got the combination of Blaze Boswell support. Uh, Blaze is not great against armored units, but he is quite good against um, all of these... Uh, small particular units. I think I'm gonna have to open with the blaze and I have to put down a Boswell over here next to him. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, so, this one is probably the one that you should be getting, but I'm not gonna outfit Nux all the way just yet. Just yet. We're gonna wait. Uh, we're gonna see. Wait and see. Uh, I'm not gonna get the oil yet. 
think, but oh my god, those shock divisions are constantly pounding away at us. Um, there we go. Okay, so Blaze is taking hits from those shock divisions over there. Um, come on, can we get can we get onto the line? Ah, uh, see how fast Blaze went down. This is one of the reasons why I didn't want to get Blaze. Um, and Nux just went down right there. Like, these shock divisions are so good against me. Uh, simply because I I can't get close enough. I can't get close enough. Uh, so I I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a Boswell. Um, so that's one of the arguments for not going um, another unit yet. But like siege units, siege units is the bane of Tychus' existence uh, because they stand they can stack up and they stack up from other waves. And because Tychus' wave relies on his own strength uh, in be in beating his opponents, if there's residual units, that'll make his life a lot harder. Um, so let's get the impact boots. Um, just to get the big stun. We're gonna hold off on the power cell uh, because uh, we don't really need it for the damage on the small units right now. Uh, we just need him to get into that back line, like ASAP. I need him on that back line right now. Uh, there we go, he's on the back line. Uh, as long as he's on the back line, that's what matters. Uh, it'll distract. Uh, oh my god. We are not doing well here. Okay, but you can also see this aspect of Tychus, right? That it is very unforgiving uh, to play Tychus if you are building the round units. And I think right now, I have done a little bit of that. Um, that being said though, let's, I'm trying to rectify this. Uh, let's, get, let's get some more Boswells. We need some more Boswells out on the field. Uh, because Boswells are our best bet right now. My Tychus ally is going Boswell. Um, he's going Boswell um, Kev. And he has one blaze in the center. Very, very good call on that one. Uh, let's see, because eventually we will be able to beat these swarm hosts. But right now is not that time. Uh, get rid of that immortal, please. Oh man. Okay, so Blaze is taking the aggro. I don't like the fact that he's taking the aggro. Uh, that really sucks for us. Um, okay, so all of those swarm hosts are coming over. Bam, blow it up with the grenade. Uh, oh, and then Kev took aggro on the other side. So let's just get another Boswell over here. We have to get those impact boots again. Uh, let's do it. Damn. Does my Tychus ally have detection here? Oh, he does. He has a Nux as well. As well. Uh, so this is why it's very important to build the front line first, I think. Because like my Tychus ally has done quite well for himself with that front line. Cigar is going nothing but Bane Links. Uh, that is bound to hit very hard. Uh, let me give a scan for Cigar so I can get rid of all those swarm posts in the back. That was very useful. Uh, I think right now is not the right time to get a refinery because we're getting pushed in. Uh, we want to try and stabilize first. Uh, here we go. There we go. We're on that back line now. And we finally got the oil on the back line. That's very good for us. Uh, we're disabling all that stuff over here. There we go. We're going, we're going, we're finally able to crack that back line. Drop that grenade over there. Okay, at least that's gone. And now with that gone and out of the way... Uh oh, there's another wave, there's another wave. But my Tychus ally is now here. I have survived to get there. And the revitalizers are, are healing me up quite well. Tychus is in the middle of the thing diagram. We are able to smash through this now. So we are starting to pull back now. We're starting to recover. Uh, that being said, let's get another boss roll. Uh... Let's just get more Boswells. I'm gonna spread them out. Spread them apart over here. So that, as we can see here, that was just the power of Roswell um, in general. Uh, although his Meteor Smasher, like, he's not getting many kills right now. We could upgrade his Redline Power Cells, but I think for now, for now, we'll focus on getting numbers out first, and then we'll focus on getting those upgrades. Uh, let's go. Uh huh. There we go. Frontline coming in. Uh, all right. There we go. Boswell has the aggro. Oh no. Oh. I think I, ideally I should be microing my nuts as well. So let's just do that. I'm gonna micro that. Make sure I can cast that by myself. Uh, because the lack of micro here is really killing us. Um, I'm not able to get onto those tanks quite effectively. Uh, I need to be, make sure I get myself onto those tanks. So let's get onto those tanks over here. Another Boswell. 
Boswell. So Boswell is very tanky. Uh, and then I think I might need another Rattlesnake. I might need another, I might need another Kev at some point in time. Uh, oh. Did I get... Okay. I got his impact boost. I was like, wait, what? What was the research complete? Um, okay, so... Oh boy. I want to make sure I don't cast Nux's Blast just yet. Um, there we go. There we go. Nux, can you please cast your Blast? Oh my god, I can't get it close. Oh no, Kev is up here being distracted. Uh, oh, I need another Kev, I think. I need two more Kevs, because, like, Kev is not... A Kev, I'm not getting to be Swarm Host right now. And that's the most important thing. Like, the boss builds are tanking very well, but there's, they're not doing the DPS. The DPS has to be coming from Kev. And, uh... Okay, so he's got two Nuxes here. So I need I need, I need more Kev. Uh, and it looks like Zagara is just going... A giant suicide wave here. Uh, wow, the splash damage is killing all of these Swarm Hosts regardless. Um... But Cigar needs to get a few uh, Scourges, so I'm going to put down another Kev over here. Make sure he gets the Stim Pack. Uh, let's go over here. Right, because my boss was looking at him. The first one's getting burned down already. Uh, there we go, there we go. They're about to hit him. Drop the Grenade. Drop the Pulse. Uh, hopefully that'll allow us to make it. No, that did not allow us to make it. There's so many tanks here. Like, Meg's Shock Divisions is the answer to Tychus. Uh, like, even, like, Raynor just going Siege Tanks, like, you have to answer Tychus using those. Um, because otherwise, like, it's really, really difficult. I think, I think with my seven Kev coming, my second Kev coming out. So we've got a critical response system going off right here. Uh, but as you can see, not really worth it. Um, he just should rolled over and died anyways, despite reviving. Um, that is a huge wave of units coming out. Um, Cigar's wave is getting pounded. We have all these Banelands coming in. Uh, well, that that will be able to push this back just temporarily of these high rears, but there are so many Manx tanks here. Basilisk. Here we go. Uh, this guy seems to be... Uh, he's, he's got his Manx game on block. Uh, he's got some Mutalisk here. Well, let's see. Alright. Now that I have more Boswells, how are we going to do Boswell Kevs? Looks like we're smashing through this line quite handedly now. And look at that stun. There we go. That's what I like to see. Uh, Tychus is still distracted by this. So I'm going to put down a grenade here. Uh, so it looks like... There we go. Uh, let's, put down, let's put down a scan over here. Uh, oh, we've got two Tychus waves now. That's surely going to help us out quite effectively. Uh, Alright, I, I think we need some more Kevs. We need, we need one more Kev, I think. We need a Kev on this side of, uh, this, of, the, of the layout. So let's just put, put down our Kev. Alright, here we go. Let's see it. Um, Alright, we're pulling up here. Oh, but look at how powerful those siege tanks are. Just blasting out, but now let's see. Let's go. I think I'm going to put that down on the siege tanks over here. But can Tychus get that grenade down? Oh no, he can't. It looks like Avatar's going Guardians now. So Guardians is now the Guardians is a counter uh, for Tychus, uh, which means I gotta start thinking about getting Vega. The only issue is now, uh, like Vega is mostly for the side side projector. Uh, oh jeez, there we go. Actually, with the Guardians, I might actually be able to just keep using Nux. It's like this guy has the ultrasonic booster and the shells, damage and radius. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna get that upgrade on my Nux as well. Um, and I think I'm gonna put Nux over here actually. I'm gonna put him over here. So I'm gonna get the pulse and the burst shells. And then duration. We'll think about that later. Now let's I think I need to go fourth gas now. I think it's about time. Uh, my ally Zagara here is on fourth gas, and it is 17 minutes into this game. If I don't go fourth gas right now, uh, I'll never be going fourth gas. So let's go for that. Uh, there we go. We're pulling in. All right. Uh huh. Nux dropping that pulse before he dies, chunking those guardians. 
There we go. Uh, those Guardians only have 150 HP though, so that, uh, that pulse is extremely powerful. Uh, but my Tychus ally here, can he handle it? Like, this is this is also, I guess, we're showcasing the critical weakness of Tychus. Um, that late game stack, like the stacking units, he cannot really deal well with that. Uh, it's tough for him to deal well with stacking units. Uh, his frontline has to get up close, up close and personal. Cigar's wave is getting pounded by these fours, uh, but Cigar just has waves and waves and waves upon units. Uh, so despite being pounded by those stores, she still managed to break through. Um, I can get out 10 of these hybrid reavers, uh, but I think I'm going to save it in terms of a to contest a power push. They are getting dangerously close to us though. I don't like this one bit. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Nux is nowhere near in range to blast this stuff. Um, ah, Jesus. So look at the difference those Guardians made. Like this stack of Guardians here, like I can't get through those Siege Tanks. I need more Boswells. Uh, and now I think I'm gonna get Red Line Power Cells for all of them. I know this might be a bad decision, um, but the Red Line Power Cells should help me punch through. Wow, this guy, t this guy just equipped his Boswells all the way. Uh, I would actually argue that if he equipped his Boswells, if he just had more Boswells, I think that would have been better. The critical response system is not necessary. Uh, just those could have been two more Boswells. Uh, so this Zagara wave is doing quite well at smashing through. Zagara will eventually start helping us clear out all this, uh, all this mess because Zagara is very strong um, at just smashing waves. So I, I believe in Zagara. Uh, oh wait, this Kev does not have Secret Stash Stimpak yet. Oh jeez. Okay, so I can't get close to the Guardian line. That's the only issue, right? Look at how far back I am right now. Uh, Oh boy. Uh, come on. Can I get Nux to drop this before he dies? Oh no. Nux didn't drop it on the full Guardian wave. I dropped it a little too early. I guess that's that's my bad, guys. Uh, let's drop that Secret Stim Stash. Uh, but we need we need more boss wills. The answer is more boss wills. Uh, my Tychus ally here just does not have enough Tychus units. And I think he's going up to tier 2. So we can get access to better hybrid, I guess? Um, but he should have done that earlier, right, as I did. Um, oh boy. Um, let's see, how many Tychus units do I have? I have five Boswells. I have 11 Tychus units. So I think there might be an argument to be made for getting um, Outlaw Armor. Just one level. And another level of Outlaw Damage. Just on 1-1. One, one. That should make a huge difference already. But I'm gonna, I think I just need more Boswells. More Boswells. I think I need some more Nuxes, to be honest. Um, Oh. Alright, so there we go. Alright. There we go. I think that blast will hit him over there. They're hitting those guardians. Ah, but the thing is, like, I can't get close to the guardians. Like, one of the things is that, like, the guardians are strong against Tychus because of the range, the sheer range and the siege power they have. Like, if you're against Tychus, you want to build siege units. Like, my opponents are itemizing or, or building the right units to counter me. Um, and so that's good on them, right? It's just showcasing, like, like, this is a tough game for me to play, right, against. Uh, oh my god, that is a huge Manx wave, but it's just getting completely swallowed by those Bane Links. That looks like it's not good enough. It looks like there's still more. And uh, it looks like I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need some more Kevs, I think. And I'm gonna need to start tacking up my Kevs to next tier. Because they're getting dangerously close. Um, dangerously close, let's see. I got the red line power cells on all my guys. So hopefully that'll help us out. Um, but. Oh no! I didn't mean to cast that there. Oh guys, misclick, miss micro. Oh jeez. That miss micro is gonna cost us, I think. Um, it's gonna cost us quite a bit. Oh, look at all of these. We've got so many guardians. Um. Jesus. I mean, the Guardians are getting countered by the Nuxes over here in the back, right? Um, I don't know. I think I'm gonna get another Nux. I'm gonna get another Nux. Make sure I get this on him as well. Um, I think at this point, I'm gonna let Tychus auto cast his grenade. I need to focus on landing those Nux storms. Um, because those are more critical for me winning this winning this game. Uh, the Tychus grenades less so. All right, here we go. We're gonna lose that bunker. 
Uh, Jesus. That's a lot of Ultralisks. Uh, uh, go Kev bashing his way through. Can we bash our way through this? Uh, oh, Nux is just not doing enough damage to these shock divisions in the back. Um, and I think Tychus has his Nuxes on autocast here. I mean, that's good in terms of the deep damage he dealt over there, but it's not good enough. Um, I think there might be some justification for Nikara. There might be. There might be. I don't know. I might lose the game off of it. Um, let's just get another Kev. Um, make sure that that's going. So Kev is this Kev who's been here with us the whole time has got the most kills, and then we're gonna go up to tier three. Once we get Kev, we're gonna go up to tier three. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. We got one one of the blasts down. Uh, drop that blast down here so my Kevs can just hammer his way through it. Uh, God, I need more Boswells. Look at that. Absolute carnage. But it looks like we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put down our hybrid. Because looks like, looks like they're trying to end the game right now with these with this hybrid push. So I'm gonna have to put down as many hybrids as I can. There we go. And with this with this many hybrid, um uh, Let's get another Boswell. So I have I have almost I think what is it? I have 14 hybrid right now. Um, so let's make sure I get this, get that. And make sure I give this Kev hammer munitions. Oh my god. Can we even hold out? I don't think we can. My hybrid aren't even, aren't even gonna make it. Oh my god. My hybrid aren't even gonna make it, guys. Oh. That was a tough match, nonetheless. Um, but hopefully I was showcasing just exactly what I was talking about in terms of how to build as Tychus, right? Um, this was sort of a disadvantaged um, Tychus setup because my opponents um, all went Siege. This setup was good for Siege as well because there's a lot of units here as well. Uh, and the way to counter Tychus is Siege units. So I think I think it's instructive to have this game here and by no means is a loss sort of um, showcasing that I did bad, I guess. But it's more showcasing that my opponents knew what they were doing, I think, if that makes any sense. Um, so... Let's see, this is my damage dealt. I actually dealt significantly less damage than my ally. Um, oh, that kind of sucks. Uh, but let's see how I did in terms of the mineral value loss. So I actually was more mineral efficient than my ally, but none of us actually broke even. I was actually the most mineral, I actually killed the most mineral value. And this is just showing just how tough it is for Tychus to deal with um, powerful long range siege units, right? Um, that's one of his core weaknesses. And because he's getting, because this brawl is actually um, beneficial for late game siege, right? Um, we're actually at a disadvantage as Tychus. But nonetheless, I think this was an informative game. Uh, leave some comments in the comment section down below if you have any um, additional tips you want to give to people who are watching this video. I'll be sure to talk, uh, discuss with you about it. Um, and let me know if you really think that Guardians counter Tychus or Shock Divisions counter Tychus. And maybe maybe they don't, and maybe I did something wrong, right? I'm always open to listen, right? Uh, to what you have to say. But let's see, let's have a look at resources too. I have the most resources. Interesting. Uh, that's probably because of that late hybrid burst at the end. Uh, but other than that, I will see you guys next time.